Hello and welcome to the Bane Picks video for the Wasabi Fenway Bowl featuring Louisville at Cincinnati. Well, not at Cincinnati. This is at Fenway Park. Sponsored by Wasabi Technologies, not the food. So we have a one point spread in this game and there is a key player missing and that will be Malik Cunningham opting out of this one. So let's check out the college football bowl games page on lamps.com. This is brought to you by Jacob Wayne himself. He's putting in tons of effort to make sure this is up to date each and every day. So when you're watching this video, we record these a little bit earlier in the week. Make sure you check out this page to see if there's any new information out. A lot of opt outs and transfer portal players in this one. On the Cincinnati side, Trey Tucker and Josh Weil are both opting out. On the Louisville side, Malik Cunningham, Ty... Tywan Evans, Catrail Clark, Tyler Hudson. I'm sorry if I butchered these names. I did not practice. Um, but there's a lot of players missing in this one. There's a lot of things to discuss in this game in general. Jacob, I'm going to kind of let you take the lead on that one. Currently, almost a pick em with the Malik Cunningham news coming out pretty recently. Where are you at for this one? Yeah, I'm going to do my best to break down everything that's happening in this game in a concise way because, holy crap, um, <laughs> there's a lot happening here. So... Both teams, without their uh, head coaches, Luke Fickle uh, off to, to Wisconsin, and Louisville head coach Scott Satterfield off to Cincinnati. So it's an interesting wrinkle, wrinkle here. Um, he will be their new head coach. In the meantime, former Ohio State defense coordinator Kerry Coombs will be the interim head coach here for Cincinnati. And, man, when he was the Ohio State defense coordinator, he was pretty terrible. I'm sure Patrick has some fond memories about that. Um, Louisville will, be, will have Dion Branch as their interim head coach uh, with Jeff Brom, former Purdue head coach, set to become the new head coach next season for them. Um, but not just Malik Cunningham out for them. Uh, leading running back Tyon Evans, uh, leading receiver Tyler Hudson, a couple other players from the linebacker core and, and such. But for Cincinnati, their starting quarterback is out for the year with a foot injury, and Evan, pra Evan Prater will start. He's looked all right. I mean, nothing to write home about. And... Uh, their offensive coordinator is joining Fickle at Cincinnati as well as their passing game coordinator. So hard to know what their offense is going to look like. Th this game is just a pure stay away for me. I, there's no way I can talk myself into either side. You've seen this, this spread jump around a little bit, and I, I think it's just due to general uncertainty about this game. Um, if I had to make a pick, if I had to make a pick, I think it would be Cincinnati just because of their defense. They still have Ivan Pace there, and you know they still have some pretty good playmakers on that side. But you know the the loss of the coaches is just such a difficult thing to handicap. So stay away from me. I'm curious if you guys have any sort of lean here. I feel like it's speculative and it's dumb that I have a lean, but I'm gonna let Patrick talk. Maybe he talks me out of it before I go. I mean, my lean is also speculative and dumb. I. I just feel like this is a game that where Louisville plays up. The line doesn't really make sense to me. I, I do agree Cincinnati is the better team, the significantly better defense as well, as, as Jacob mentioned. Their secondary, it obviously fell off with some a lot of the talent they lost last year, but it still has graded out really highly. So this is still a really solid defense. I just feel like, yeah, this is a game where Louisville plays up. I still think they can have some success there. Backup quarterback whose name I'm blanking on at the moment, I think his last name's Doman. I, I actually thought they looked decent with him in uh, at stretches earlier in the season. So I think he can still have some success offensively. I think they'll still be able to run the ball and get some momentum that way here. Um, but I mean, I can't. I just can't make a huge play on this on either side, and especially on the Louisville side that I have a, a speculative lean towards. But I, I will put a little bit down on it just because I don't know. It feels like a fun spot to back Louisville. The line's kind of fishy. So yeah, that's what I mean. The, the over-under, we can get into, too. This is a really low number. I think it's kind of interesting with how much Louisville is struggling tackling this year. But Cincinnati also hasn't been great in space. They, their offense really isn't as explosive as it as it was last year. I mean, for obvious reasons, given personnel um, leaving. But it's something to keep in mind, just how low this total is. But, yeah, lean towards Louisville on the spread. Yeah, so... I. I've been betting against Cincinnati a lot this year, I feel like. And this is a spot that before, even before the Malik Cunningham news, I was pretty ready to back Cincinnati, even with a lot of uncertainty. I, I'm going to be on them at plus one or, you know, take their money line at plus 100, I guess I'll put it there. Um, it, it's hard for me to describe <laughs> why I'm doing this because it seems kind of silly with all the uncertainty. But it does, despite the fact that I feel like there's a lot of outcomes, 
I, I really do think there's still a value, and I think a large percentage of these end with Cincinnati winning this football game. And I think, Patrick, you, you kind of touched on it. I just think Cincinnati's the better team on paper. Like, I think their defense is better. I think they're going to be able to figure out on offense. It's scary because I feel like Louisville has randomly had good performances as a team, you know, outside of Malik Cunningham throughout this season. Uh, the NC State game comes to mind a little bit. Uh, even the James Madison game, they, they kind of impressed me in that one. But generally speaking, this Louisville team is just not that talented outside of Malik Cunningham. And with him not there, even with him there, I was kind of ready to back Cincy, who I think... You know, they played even better than I thought they were going to against a incredibly talented two-lane team in that championship game. I, w I feel like I got lucky to hit that little parlay that I created, if Jacob remembers. But I think if they bring that same energy, and I understand it's weird because your coach is no longer there, and it's going to be a different game plan, and maybe we don't have the most confidence in the current coach of, or the interim head coach of Cincinnati, but I think they figure it out because the guys on that field are so good. And... Uh, that's where I'm just going to leave it. Like, if you're going to give me the better team in a neutral site game in a bowl game like this at plus 100, I, I'm just, I just feel a little forced to take it. A half unit play, obviously, because of all the different factors going into this one. If this was, you know, the coaches were still there, we knew everyone was going to play, and you're giving me plus 100, it would be like a one and a half unit play for me on Cincinnati. But with all these factors, I'm going to limit my own variance and put it down to a half unit. Yeah, I'm just not quite as bullish on Cincinnati as you are, and that's primarily because I'm worried about their ability to run the ball. They rank outside the top 80 in rushing EPA and explosiveness, and Louisville's inside the top 40 in both defensively. Ryan Montgomery played better at the end of the year, but he's only averaged 4.5 four yards per carry, 4.3 yards per carry, and had one game with 60-plus rushing yards this season. So you look at Evan Prater, and he's going to be under fire in this game. Louisville ranks 9th in PFF pass rush grade. Yasser Abdullah had an awesome season, finished with eight sacks. Uh, him and Yaya Diaby are the players to watch on the defensive line for them. But I think both quarterbacks are going to be under fire in this game too because Ivan Pace gets after it and Dante Corleone was an um, all AAC player. So I think both these quarterbacks are going to be under fire. I think both secondaries are vulnerable to big plays. It's just a matter of who's going to make them. And I don't know. It's hard to have confidence one way or the other. I, I I definitely feel like this is the kind of game that gets won by one big explosive play at some point. It's just hard to know which team is going to come through with it. Yeah, and I, it, despite what I'm saying, I still think Jacob has the best advice, which is don't bet on the game, um, which is fair. Patrick, any last comments before we wrap it up? Yeah, I'll be interested to see how the Cincinnati run defense holds up in this game because... From a yards per rush standpoint, they've done pretty well, but they haven't really been tested a whole lot. They're 109th in opponent rushing attempts, and that's really where the Louisville offense has has shined, I think, when they can really get that rushing attack going. The thing is, Willie Cunningham is a big part of that rushing attack, so there's the other side of that coin, too. But uh, I, I just want to see if if uh, if Louisville tries to attack on the ground, and if so, how does Cincinnati hold up? Because the number would suggest that the books think that they are going to hold up pretty well there. Yeah, I, I guess... I mean, maybe I'm not giving, giving Louisville's defense enough credit, and I think that's maybe where there's a little bit of flaw in my logic, and Jacob mentioned that being a little bullish on Cincinnati. But this over-under 41.5, I still feel like favors... I don't know. I don't know if I'm that's true, but I lean towards wanting to pick Cincinnati if the books think it's a low-scoring game. Like Again, I just think their defense holds up. I think they are going to be the team that gets that explosive play, but maybe I'm making too many predictions for this one. Patrick, do you have any comment on Kerry Coombs? Yeah, so my whole take on him is he's a bad play caller, but a good leader of men. So if they have other defensive coaches in there, and like we're not too far removed from Fickle and and his defensive play calling staff. So like I think if he's not like, you know, leading the prep for this game, then they should be in a good spot. If he is leading the prep, then yeah, I, I would probably be a little concerned. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be interesting for sure all right so let's get to wrap it up for the wasabi fenway bowl i mean again the best bowl name out there in the business we got patrick on louisville i'm on cincinnati jacob staying away um not big plays from any of us like i said half unit patrick is it even official play from you or is it more just a lean 
put a quarter unit on it because I, I I just have a feeling, but like yeah, I really it's not substantiated by much. So if you're in a confidence pool or something like that, like put this one as like your lowest confidence because I I, I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> this will be I mean a confidence pool in bowl games. How many bowl games are there? Like forty four points you can get up to. That'd be pretty cool. We should do that. All right. So, let's go wrap it up. Thank you guys for watching. As always, if you liked this video, drop a like. If you did not, a dislike. Comment down below your favorite bets. Hit the subscribe button to get more great content like this. We'll be covering every single bowl game. And check out the College Bowl Game. Um, oh, my God. <laughs> the College Bowl Game webpage that Jacob is writing where we're going to have every single game covered. He's going to let you know the opt-outs and the transfers and the injuries for each and every game as well as the odds. And I believe Jacob also kind of have leans has some leans and picks on that page as well. So plenty of great information there on lineups.com link in the description. All right, let's go to wrap it up. We'll see you for the next one very soon.